everybody, this is Tyler here at the Highlander Singer Summit, checking in with 51 at 50Z. Zero gravity has been having a phenomenal performance here as we're filming this in day two so far. A lot of great things to talk about with this robot. And I think I think one of the great things with Teams 2 is figuring out what's working, what's not, and how we can improve throughout the course as well, too. 5150, like I said, really been focusing a lot on just scoring in regards to the mobile goals. So we're talking about some of their mechanisms, what they've been doing for that. They do have a wall stick mechanism, but it decided that not quite working as well out as well as they want. So we're talking about how their improvement process has been working out for that too. We'll be talking about how they approach the game, some of their uh, mat strategy, design strategy behind that as well. A lot of great things, tons of sensors on this robot. So pay attention as we go through this, coming up here on Pips and Parts. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. The Robotics Education and Competition Foundation provides fantastic programs for students from elementary school all the way through college. These include VEX, Aerial Drone Competition, Online Challenges, JROTC, Grow Powered, Scholarships, Certifications, and so much more. To discover these exciting opportunities, visit RECF.org and get connected. Chris, let's talk about this mobile goal mechanism. You have such control on the field as we've gone through on this. And something that you were talking to me earlier is it kind of runs in tandem with your intake, so I'd love to hear more about that. So when I was tuning this, the, the main thing that we were focusing on was what is the best way to get it on every single orientation. So obviously it clamps it on this orientation. It's fine. Uh, that one. Like the hook, it's perfectly fine in terms of that. It'll put the, the, the ring on. And it, our main goal is just if it messes up, if we're in a match, obviously we can't control, it's going to go exactly on the flat side, it's not possible. So we have to make sure that it can clamp on edges, corners, everything. Uh, and the way we did that was, like originally, you can take the mobile go out. Originally, down here, we had screws instead of those green rubber things. So what screws did is they're very smooth. So that means that the goal slides out, and if there's low pressure, it's just going to not clamp. So we changed it to something with higher friction which allows it to like actually fully clamp onto the goal, even if it's not at 100 or 90 or 80 PSI. Uh, and that really helped out a lot with a lot of our problems during auto especially, to get like a smaller margin of error to grab the goal and not cross the autonomous line. So during actual matches as well, so you've really been seeing that pay off for you quite well? Oh yeah, like I, I've been grabbing goals in the, it's the, like the worst orientations, there'll be like a corner, <laughs> like three negative goals, one on top of, and it'll, it'll still be it'll still be okay. So it's it's really helped out a lot. Well, and the way this meta's really been evolving, that's becoming just more increasingly important, right? Is to try to get those really quick grabs if you can, yes, yeah. as quickly as possible. So you know, as you look as you're getting ready for playoffs here, does that strategy potentially change for you at all? Or are you looking at kind of approaching it the same way? Oh, they're definitely approaching it the same way. We want the most amount of goals possible on our side, and that involves trying to get the goals as quick as possible with our clamp. Let's pass over to Eric, talk about the uh, sweeper mechanism that you're using on there. And then we mentioned earlier, um, you have a wall stick on it, but you've been using less and less because not quite hitting the mark of what you want to do for it. So one thing I love with teams for that is just talking about what you've learned from that and how you plan on improving in the future too. Yeah, so for our wall stick mech, uh, when we designed it, it, like we thought it would be fine, we, but one aspect we completely overlooked was how we were going to hold, like the, the ploy is fine. But one of the main aspects that we completely overlooked was how we were going to keep the two uh, claw halves like holding the ring in place while we bring it up and still be able to be like a lot like rubber band enough so that when we pull out of the um, stakes wall stakes that the ring can still be scored so we had to kind of come up with a little bit of a more last minute sort of uh, limiting mechanism and we tried multiple ones we actually first tried to use can you we first tried to use um, zip ties in the back like this where we just have like one cut off zip tie end on this and then it would just hold the thing out against the rubber bands. We found that that's really really like the zip ties themselves the plastic is really stretchy so under all the tension of the rubber bands what it tends to do is just gets compressed over time and it will um, just collapse and it might even collapse in the match so that's really not great. And then what we then ended up having to add is that we added some more hard stops here but the only Another issue we have with these is that they kind of have a tendency if we open up these claws too far, they might come out of place and it no longer locks these in the right position and they also collapse. But that seems to be giving, the hard stop seems to be giving us a much better reliability and consistency on field right now at least. So in the future, we probably want to look at how we can uh, better limit the motion of these hard stops so that we can still use the hard stops but not have the risk of them 
falling out of place and things like that. And the reason I love to bring this up, and thank you for being humble enough to talk about some of this, because I think there's many other teams that are finding these things as well too, or maybe quite haven't discovered on the robot, and something a team now can look for to try to improve as well too. So really appreciate you taking the time to try to help other teams as well to improve their robots also. So talking about thank the uh, sweeper mech you have. Yeah, so the sweeper mech um, is, thank you Chris, uh, something we also added because we were watching signature events, we were looking for strategies, and we noticed that robots had a really tough time clearing the four ring corners. And you need that positive corner if you want to have a chance at a match. And if you're going to spend 20, 30 seconds trying to get all the rings out of the corner so you can score a goal in that corner, that's not going to be very good for you because what if you have to also go play offense? You got to score rings on your own goal. You can't just spend half the match clearing out the corner with, I don't know, your intake or something. So we added this thing to help clear it out. And again, this isn't exactly perfect right now, but it's doing very well for us. It clears out the top three, and the, low, and the final ring is just fine enough that where we put the goal in, it can sit kind of like on the ring like this, and it will still count because it'll overhang into the corner, and uh, it'll still be touching the field. So technically it's still in the positive corner, but it's not as good as we can. On the next robot or something like that, we'd probably like to extend this a little further, and that'll help us clear all the rings in the corner as well. Cody, let's talk about sensors on your robot and what you're running for that. You know, we were talking earlier, a lot of different sensors go into it, so I'd love to just hear how your configuration works for that. Uh, so we have two, uh, two rotational sensors on the bottom here, and that's for odometry. Um, and really, it just helps us track the location of the bot on the field, uh, the X and Y coordinates. Uh, really basic stuff. Most teams should, most teams should have uh, odometry on their bot. Um, another sensor that we have is we have the optical sensor on the top. Can you flip it over? Thank you. Um, and what this does is if it detects the wrong color ring in our intake, what it'll do is it'll run the intake backwards for a slight second and then it'll fling it up. So it'll fling it past the MOGO. Uh, right now, currently it's not working because the LED isn't on. Uh, we don't have the LED on during driver uh, because we don't anticipate our uh, driver taking the wrong ring. Um, and then another sensor that we have is over here, uh, the distance sensor on the underneath of our MOGO clamp. What we found is sometimes when we're using odometry points, maybe uh, the bot's at a slight angle. So it doesn't, uh, let's say the MOGO is like here for instance, and the bot's like slightly off. If we drive to our normal point, it won't clamp properly. So what will end up happening is we'll just drag it nothing with us. But with the distance sensor here, what the bot will do is it'll keep driving until it detects it and then it'll clamp it. Uh, which is, uh, we found to be much more efficient at doing this. Uh, one last sensor that we have that actually we added on last night at the hotel was this dis distance sensor right here. And the purpose of this was to detect the wall stake. But the issue we found with it is that the wall stake is too narrow and the precision needed was very accurate. So it didn't necessarily work out the way we wanted it to. Uh, so it's just been there ever since. Very cool. Lots of great stuff to break down on that for teams as well. Uh, we talked a little bit about uh, that you have odometry as well too, but I want to pass to Jax if there's anything that you want to add on in regards to the odometry on your robot. So as we were uh, sort of looking how to improve our bot, we've noticed like that we had a clear lack of like hanging on our bot. And uh, that was mostly really due to the odometry pods over here always dropping down and so and always contacting the field at the end when we were trying to hang. And so to fig to figure out how to pull these up, we decided to put a piston over here and the string over here that would pull it up at the end so Chris could hang correctly and we could get those final points at the end and not worry about anything else. Let's wrap up and talk, uh, isn't Ava, more about uh, some of your, how you're approaching uh, coming into signature events and tournaments, some of your match rating behind it, anything else you want to add on with how your team actually looks at coming to an event such as this? Yeah, so it really comes down to how we handle the pre-comp and uh, post-comp uh, stuff. So a lot of what we do and how we come up with our designs is looking at signature events. So we all like to gather as a team, go over, we watch all the 
follow us as, as much as possible, take notes, and we come up different ideas. And then some of our ideas, we take time to develop, do iterations, all that. But sometimes we have some issues everywhere, so anytime we have something like that, we try to come up with some quick solutions on the fly. Like last night, we were at the hotel, we built like a mini field in our hotel room, nice. and we're able to add the distance. Uh, Anything like that, we try to work together as a team, come up with solutions and do all that stuff. And naturally we run into problems or get stuck sometimes, so that's when our engineering notebook comes in. So we don't just do it because we have to, it's actually really useful for us and uh, we're able to look back and look at what we've done, what we've tried, what's worked, what doesn't work. Often before every team, uh, every meeting at school or at home, we'll, get in, we'll meet as a team and uh, we'll discuss what we're doing that day, what we need to get done and uh, what is what we, we can improve upon. So this notebook can be really, really helpful. Well, Zero Gravity, thank you so much for taking time to tell us about the operations of your team, a ro great robot overview, learning things and improving all the way through, but you're still having an amazing performance here so far, so we can't wait to see how you do at the signature event. So good luck the rest of the way, and we can't wait to see how you do throughout the rest of the season. Thanks a lot. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. The Robotics Education and Competition Foundation provides fantastic programs for students from elementary school all the way through college. These include VEX, Aerial Drone Competition, Online Challenges, JROTC, Girl Powered, Scholarships, Certifications, and so much more. To discover these exciting opportunities, visit RECF.org and get connected. First Updates Now has become the Fun Robotics Network. Check us out at funroboticsnetwork.com and all the social links that you see above here. And check out some of our new merchandise options that are both fun and robotics related as well too, both on our website and right underneath this YouTube video.